In this video, I'm going to show you how I use CAD software and a 3D printer to fix something that would otherwise be thrown away. When I first bought a 3D printer, I didn't really know what I wanted to use it for. I just loved the idea that I'd be able to create things out of nothing, but I also liked the idea that I might be able to repair things around the house. For as long as I can remember, I've always hated throwing things away just because a small plastic part is broken. It's not just the cost of replacing the whole item, but the fact that most of it would end up in landfill if the parts weren't recyclable. I'd often try gluing things together or fabricating replacement parts from anything I could find. It wasn't until I got a 3D printer that properly fixing things and sometimes even improving on designs became a reality for me. I decided to make this video to show how I use a 3D printer to appease that little boy who just can't bear to throw away his toys. The thing I'm gonna try and repair today is this radio controlled transmitter, which has something wrong with the steering. It's making a clicking noise and the wheel is no longer returning to the middle as it should. This particular one is not available to buy in the UK where I live and a replacement from China would cost 25 pounds or $33 and would take about three weeks to arrive with a decent tailwind. I won't bore you by showing you how I took all the screws out, but basically I just kept going until I found the culprit. This little plastic arm is broken. I'm pretty confident that if I can print a new one of these, I can hand my son back a working toy by the end of the day and earn some pretty significant dad points. So where do we start? Well, the first thing to do is to model the part we want in some form of CAD software. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. Now, this is not designed to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to model this particular part, more an overview of what's possible if you put a little time into learning how to use some of these tools. My weapon of choice is Fusion 360, but there are many more out there and each have their own workflows. A flat part like this is very simple to design in something like Fusion 360, and all we need is a set of vernier calipers to measure the important dimensions. The part we need to copy is already broken in two, so to make it easier, I'm just gonna super glue it back together quickly so we can take some measurements. Once the glue's set, we can quickly reassemble everything to see how the part's supposed to work. This gives us a good idea of which dimensions are critical and which are not. This particular part has a lot of curves, which are difficult to model, but actually, the main dimensions we need to worry about are the pivot point, the center shaft and the spring hook and the flat edge that the cam runs on. We'll concentrate on these first and worry about the rest later. Once we have Fusion open, we can start creating a 2D sketch of the shape we want. The critical dimensions of this part are the diameters of the holes and their relationship to each other. There's also a straight edge which intersects the center of one of the holes, which is really helpful. One trick for measuring small hole diameters is to use a good selection of drill bits. I have a set that ranges from one to six millimeters in 0.1 mil increments, which makes finding the internal diameters nice and easy here. Make sure of course that you don't use the sharp end. The small hole here is two millimeters, with the external being four millimeters. We can then draw these on our sketch in our CAD software, all centered around the origin, which is where all of our axes meet. The straight line extends out to the left, so we can add that in now too. I then need to know the other internal diameter. Using the drill bit technique, I find it's 5.2 millimeters. However, the center of this hole is not on the same plane as the other hole, so we need to find a couple of other dimensions to accurately set its location. To start with, we'll just draw the 5.2 millimeter circle roughly near where it needs to be. We can then measure how far the center of this hole is from the first hole on the part that it attaches to. The distance between the two centers is 12 millimeters, so we'll set this on our drawing. We can then work out how far the larger hole center is from the flat section with a quick calculation as we know the diameter and can measure how far the edge of the curve is from the flat edge. The inner edge of the curve is 3.5 millimeters from the flat section and we know the radius of the circle is 2.6 millimeters. The hole center is therefore 0.9 millimeters from the flat edge. Once we enter this information, we've already pinned down the most critical dimensions for our part. To find the spring location point, we can simply measure from the flat edge and the small hole again as we did with the larger hole. Now that's as far as I'm gonna go with measuring. I'm basically gonna make up the other dimensions to make them look right as they're not critical. The easiest way I find to do this is actually take a picture of your part and then import that picture into your software. You'll need to scale it and then move it around until it sits in the right place. Once this is done, you can add in any sketch details that look to be correct until you have a complete outline of your part. Now we can simply extrude all the parts we want up the thickness of the part which is two millimeters. Now we could just leave it there and print an exact replica of the original part, but seeing as we know there's a weak spot, we might as well try and improve its strength. We might not be able to change the outside profile of the part, but there is room to change its thickness. I can't increase the thickness at either end, but I can in the middle. With a quick sketch on the side profile, we can add an increased thickness in the middle of the part while leaving the ends alone. Now we can save the part as a mesh file that will be ready for our slicer software. 
I'm currently using Cura and we'll use almost default settings. I'm going to print this part with PLA plus as it's a little bit stronger than normal PLA. Also, as the part is pretty small, I'll set the quality to super, which basically means that there'll be more thinner layers, which helps with small detail. Once I hit slice, I can see that it's only going to take eight minutes to print. I can save the G-code file to my printer's SD card and print out the new part. If you're enjoying this video, then hit like and think about subscribing. I make regular content to help with 3D printing and other projects. And as if by magic, eight minutes later, I have my replacement part. Comparing it to the original, I can see that it's a little bigger in the areas where we guessed at the dimensions, but nothing that a little cleanup won't fix. I also run a drill bit through the pivot hole just to make sure everything moves freely. Once the part is fitted, all I need to do is reassemble everything and check it works. So would I advise buying a 3D printer and learning how to use CAD software just so you can fix a few plastic toys? Well, no. However, if you're anything like me and have to know why something's broken and that it can't be fixed before throwing it away, or you simply want to reduce the waste you produce, a 3D printer could be a good investment. The Ender 3 version 2 that I used to print this part can be bought for less than $200 with everything you need to get printing. I have links below in the description if you want to check out to see if there are any deals available. If you want to learn how to use it, then check out this playlist. If you just want to see more about 3D printing, then click here. Thanks for watching.